up out of that sun. It was getting hot in that car. So look, this is part two to my job course story. So I had my hour sign. I had my my Cardi's on. You know, that's a Detroit thing. If you out hustling, that's like the, it symbolizes that you hustling and you a D-boy, you out here getting it. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I learned a lot of my game from was there. Like I I would take, like I would see what guys do. We making money together. I'm making money with my Chicago guys. I'm making money with my Indiana guys, my Ohio guys. And it just spread. And like some of these guys, after I graduated, I still had contact with, you know, from, from then. And, and we always did good business. I never, you know, I never got robbed in there, but somebody did break into my dorm and they knew what I was doing. And I, and I ended up finding out who it was and it was what it was. You know, I, I handled it how I handled it, handled it. It almost got me kicked out, but, you know, having an ace in the hole, I didn't get kicked out. Shout out to, um, you know, Calvin McCree, man. That was my guy. So he saved me from a lot of uh, situations in there. But I think, you know, my grandma doing that was like the best thing because it gave me so many things, a point of references to go off of. I've seen people in there, you know, come in not pregnant and leave with two kids. That's how we wasn't, we wasn't supervised. We wasn't, we wasn't under heavy micromanaging or uh, heavy supervision. You got people that was going to jail after they left the dam, after they left the ground. Like, where they do that at? Your parents send you to school to actually get an education and better yourself and get out the environment, and this is what it was. I think it would have been it would have been better if my grandma probably would have sent me to one out. And I don't know. I'm me. So anywhere, I'm me. You know, you put me anywhere in the jungle, I'm going to come out wearing the mink. I'm going to be wearing the lion. And I feel like, I still feel like that. I'm going to come out wearing the lion's head. I'm going to come out looking like a king. I always feel like that. There's no place I can't be in America. I've been through so much stuff in my life. There's no, in, in America, you can put me in anywhere in the world, I'm gonna come out on top. That's just how I am. It's not confident. I'm I'm not I'm not being uh, over cocky or just being, you know, I'm, I'm just confident. You understand what I'm saying? But being in that situation, man, is so crazy. And listen, to anybody that's watching this, I see that I've been looking at the analytics. I've been getting like 17 through 24 year olds or that type of crowd. If you watching this, man, listen, I was you. I was in juvenile sitting there, you know, uh, reading the Bible, getting like me and God got a good understanding. I was in there crying. Yeah, by myself, I was crying, but I wasn't showing that to the rest of the population. I was in there crying. I'm not wondering. I don't know. I don't know when I'm coming home. You know, they say you go to jail you, your first time. That's when you see what type of person you are, the characteristics that you have. I was in juvenile, y'all, and I'm a... <laughs> I was in juvenile. I laugh because I'm about to tell y'all something. I was in juvenile, and before I got there, and this is how much entangled in the streets I was right, at a young age. The police was looking for me because I had did some stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing, some fraud and all that, and... um. The lady ended up reporting and I end up, she ended up reporting and then coming out to, you know, the address or whatever because I was too young. So she come out there and I end up leaving. Like I ran away from my grandma house and I end up going on the other side of Seven Mile. Listen to my story right quick. It's, you, you always going to learn something. So, and you're going to laugh too. I mean, we got you. We got you. So I'm sitting on Seven Mile in Fenmore and I see the police. He pull up. I got a warrant out for my arrest because I left my grandma's house because it is warrant and because it is lady. I knew what time it was. You know, people always talk about, you're gonna hear these trucks going past too. People always used to talk about jail. Like it was just some place to go and some place to see. And I was intrigued. And sometimes on your subconscious mind, it could put you right where you thinking about. You know what I'm saying? If you meditating on that idea, that's what's gonna come. So I'm meditating on that idea and that's what came. But before it came, I'm sitting there, I'm on the run, I done shaved my head, boy. It wasn't even that serious. But me, I didn't know how serious it was. Shave my head, boy, police pull up on me. This is a true story. My my old dude, he, he could tell, he's going to confirm this. He's going to confirm me. He probably, he probably sitting there laughing right now because he know what I'm about to say. They pull up on the block. My old dude sitting behind a line of cars. I see his car all the way in the back. Damn, hold up. They coming. Sitting on the car. They like, do you know this young man? 
I'm like, nah. I'm like, oh. Cause he got, you know, we looking for him. I'm like, all right, I'll tell him, you know, I'll tell him when I see him that y'all looking for him. So he pulled around the block. I'm so already trained criminal, like I was already criminalized in my mind. I thought about this situation 50 times before it even happened. So they came and sw swarmed the block, they blitzed the block. Guess what I do? I already knew it was a one way street. That block had already been getting raided so many times. This was already in play for me. I hit a one way street, so did the traffic was going this way. I went this way on the one way street. I got away from the police, y'all. So I'm just saying, my mind back then was so mature and so past, like, I'm young, y'all. So past that, and you know, I, I became a pro at being a criminal. And where, when you become a pro at being a criminal, they got a place for you. So your number gonna get called. So after all of that, y'all, you know, I, um, I already knew where I was going. You know, I already knew what I was doing. So Job Corps, man, it was a place it was just like that. You got people that's doing that. I ended up graduating from Job Corps, though, y'all. Besides the, I drowned out the noise. I ended up graduating. And my grandma was so happy at that damn graduation. I had my cousin there. She probably going to watch this. Uh, I never tell my family to watch none of my videos simply because you're going to see it. Or you're going to hear it from somebody. Or you're going to see it firsthand. And these is nothing but the honest to God truth and transparency, man. Um, what I would like to say, you know, I graduated from Job Corps. Shout out to Job Corps too, man. They really had some programs in there that could change the, the trajectory of where you going in life. But it's all on you to get that knowledge and go. You know what I'm saying? Go forward. I ended up graduating out of there, got my uh, diploma. End up going to Wayne State for a couple, like a semester or two. I didn't like it and I left. That's the end of that story. But in this story, it's just telling you that a team can be here talking. You know what I'm saying? In retrospect. And I want all the teams that's looking from the outside in, man. I love y'all, man. I love the younger guys because I can always empathize with y'all and how y'all feeling because I was there. I was a hood rat. I was not a rat. We ain't even gonna put that. I was just, I just loved that hood shit. You understand what I'm saying? I, I was in love with it. I was listening to music. Tupac, I was, I loved Tupac. I was listening to him tell us, paint a picture. And when I got in that seat, it wasn't nothing like that. If you understand what being a street ninja is and being a hood ninja, it, it wasn't like that. So I kind of got it was distasteful when I got in those situations. And, um, you know, you put yourself in those situations and ain't nothing like that. And I'm sure he been in some situations, but he never been in the situations that I've been in. Trust me, I'm not trying to devalue that man or nothing, but I listened to the music at a point and then I grew out of it and started listening to Jay-Z because Jay-Z really was going through it, but he was trying to transition out of it. So. You know, I just want my guys, man. I want everybody who watching this, who gonna watch it, just you know, start transitioning, man, and you could become top of whatever field that you in, and have people watching you on, you know, on on a, on, a, on a channel like this, and actually be like, you know what, I'm gonna change, cause I I've watched these videos and I watch people and I study them. And I'm like, you know what? I have something that's rare. Because I'm one of the few in my in my section as far as 48219 in Detroit. If you look up the crime in that in 2004 and 2003, and I'm getting chills on me every time I say that, I'm telling you I was there. And if I wasn't there, you know what I'm about to say. So if you look up that crime in that area, it was high red. That was one of the, and it still is. Shout out to all my guys in 48219. You know what I'm the narrative I'm pushing. I'm not there, but I'm there. You know, I still help the guys out in prison. It ain't much, but $20, $25 because I was once them. In the feds, I still send money. I don't send letters because I don't have time to do that. My time is, is the trucking and YouTube, man. I'm pushing them. I'm pushing a bigger envelope. No, I'm, I'm giving me, I'm giving me to you. So this 18 wheeler man, you're getting to know me more as a person. And 
Another thing before I leave, man, I'm long-winded, y'all. When I get passionate about something, I just go on and on and on. I'm not glorifying nothing that I've done. Understand that. Understand that if you seeing all of this drill, you hearing this drill music and you seeing this drill music, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. You don't want to have them spirits on you because that shit lingers for, for years and you'll be waking up out your sleep sometimes and having cold sweats thinking about stuff that you done did or you done seen, man. With that, I'm gonna end it on that note, man. I love y'all. Y'all be safe out there for my drivers. Y'all drive safe out there, man. And we out here.